Okay, so good morning and welcome for the class of uh, aircraft structures. Okay, so, so this course is a continuation of Aircraft Structures 1 and uh, I'm going to start with a simple lecture because I think it's a good fundamental about the basic principles of uh, structural design. So the first lecture will be on uh, wind rigs, wind, wind rigs. and fuselage frames. Okay, so this lecture you will see you don't need any complicated equation, you just use the basic uh, design criteria when doing the design of either a wing rib or the side of the fuselage. Alright, so let's go by general uh, observation is that aircraft structures are constructed primarily from Okay, all time used to be 100% metal, but nowadays sometimes they have a little bit of composite, so I'm just going to add it composite skins. Okay, so this type of structure is good in what? So we know that the three basic loads you can have are tension. Or the opposite, which is compression, the one will be shear, so shear loads, and the last one would be for buckling. Right? So basically, you probably study in uh, structures one that uh, for this type of loads this way of designing is good so basically you think that something when it's thin but when it has a lot of ribs is good for tension and compression but when something is thin it's generally not that good for uh, for shear load so for this let's say it's medium and for buckling Generally, at a bad design. Okay, so I don't have anything on hand, but basically, all right. So bending, you know that bending would just be a load that, for example, when I mean this marker, which is not good, but if you try to bend in this way, all right, up and down, this would be. This is bending, and the bending induces tension or compression. Okay, or also tension compression would be to do this. Okay, shear. When you do this, you also create a shear on this vertical component. Shear will also be if I try to twist this. Okay, and buckling. Here you won't see it, but if I try to push this really, 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 really hard, okay, it will buckle. So maybe let me do some uh, quick sketches over here. So see buckling. Let's say you have a beam. If you compress it, what's going to happen? It's going to deform this way. Okay? Here, if you have a structure over here, this is your beam. Okay, basically, what you're looking at is at the forces that will be going. That will try to break this on the uh, uh, up and down. 
case this would be the shear force okay and then a tension compression if this is your element from the side now this time this will be tension if it's going out and if the forces are going in will be compression all right so the basic design guidelines they are very simple Here first the sketch of a structure. So let's say you construct a structure of, uh, you know, you use different roads. So let's say you have here one road. You put another one here. Uh, maybe this. We put it then this one here over here. Okay. So let's say we do this, and I put another one. Let me just redo the same structure over here. Okay, so basic is to use common sense. So, the first thing is that let's say this will be some uh, roads or stiffeners more aircraft notation stiffener but what what's important over here is that you know that let's say between this stiffener this stiffener and this stiffener here would be some type of panel and here would be some type of panel so basically it would be a skin covering it okay so basically what happened if the load we apply load over here so this is good because basically what's important is that you know that the main force field about this load will be tension compression on this term okay and what do we know we know that these type of structures are really good for tension and compression but what happens if the, if you go then and remove this component here this stiffeners okay then everything will be resistant on this one and will be on bending okay so again uh, the first rule is very simple is uh, if the load is applied in the plane of a web, what is the best design? Is to have a stiffener right here that will be where the load is being applied. Okay? The stiffener must be aligned with the direction. of the force slash load when possible okay so you see this is common sense so the other case would be what let's say you have a load that is not either let's say vertical or perpendicular okay so let's say in this case it will be in that direction and imagine you don't have this difference so in this case what is the best design is that you need to have one component that will resist the load on the y direction which in this case would be which element this one here and you need another element or another stiffener that will resist the load on the x direction so it would be this one over here so you see that's it you just need to use, you just need to use common sense so if this is not possible, if the above is not possible, comma, 
the load slash force should be applied at the intersection of two stiffeners. that each stiffener resists the component of the load in its direction. Okay. So let's do one example. I think that's the best way to uh, fully understand the problem. So page two over here. So let's say you have some type of cantilever beam, okay? So the way we're going to design the cantilever beam is that let's say we're going to have a flange over here, a long flange, then you have another long flange over here. All right, so now we need basically another one here. Now, let's say this is the wall, which we're gonna assume this is clamp over here. All right. So this is one flange, another flange, another flange, or, or we can call this one Another one will be stiffeners of flanges, we can call them. So let's say we're going to put one in here, one in here, and one in here. Okay? So the load, we know it's going to be a load, let's say apply right over here. And this load, we call it F, let's call it F, has a force, has a value of 4,000 newtons, and this is at an angle of 60 degrees. All right. So is this a, a good or bad design for this? So this should be bad. So if you want to have a better design, what should we do? We should put some type of flange over here. Okay, because we want to have one load to carry the Y component of the force and another comp and another stiffener or flange carry the X component. All right. So, and you need to remember here that on each one of these panels here, uh, this is a skin, so it's cover. Okay. So we're going to call over here. This would be Q1, the shear flow, and this needs to be equal to zero because in structures the equation used all the time is summation force equal to zero. So if this one is going up. So the summation force is on the Y direction at zero. The other one goes up, the one goes down, okay? If we put this one this way, now what should be the direction for the other one? You know, if you have zero, it's this one. And over here, you know that Q is the shear force. Okay, which basically the units are force per unit length. 
why in this case uh, let's say we're going to do this in a, I mean it's force per unit length it doesn't matter but in this problem let me do the units in millimeters so the distance uh, let's call this point here this would be so ah, sorry for that this is Q1 then we have a seven panel over here so we do exactly the same thing we have a third panel over here and we're going to have a fourth panel right over here ok and let me just call this will be point is okay because you see there's already one component, structural component, resisting the force in the direction of the load. Okay? So, since we're talking millimeters, let me just put here millimeters. That will be, will be more consistent. So now we need to know the dimension. So this will be, let's say, 250 millimeters. 250. 250. From here, from D to K will be 200, and then from uh, and from K to H will be 100. Okay. So basically, what we need to find over here is to determine. the shear flows Q1 Q2 Q3 and Q4 and the forces on the flanges And stiffeners. Okay, so basically these components over here. Basically, this would be a flange, this would be a flange, and really whatever is in the middle here will be stiffeners. Okay. Okay, so let's first find Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So what we need to do here is to we know the only equation we can use is summation of forces equal to zero. So since the only equation we can use is summation force equal to zero, we need to find a place where you have forces, okay, a force at least applied, so that we can relate this one of the forces to the stiffness. So I think the best one would be to start, let's say, by the component here, JK, okay? So if I plot here the stiffener, JK, Now, just think about statics. First thing you do is what a free body diagram. So you're going to do your free body diagram of your com of your stiffener. Here we go. So you know the force here is four thousand newtons at an angle of sixty degrees. And then what else do you know? You know that on this direction, you look at the figure, at the top, you will have a shear flow of Q1, and at the bottom, you will have a shear flow of Q2. 
2 and then one more thing that we need to know probably is what is the length of this component is 250 millimeters okay so since the only question we can use is summation of forces the summation of forces on the x direction, all right, will be equal to zero. So this will give you what? We start from zero. We know shear is force per unit length. So we'll give you what? Um, x will be minus 250 times q1 because it's going to the left, plus 250 times q2. All right, plus 4,000, all right, and we need the X component, so that would be sine 60, and this must be equal to zero. So from here, we can get one equation that will be minus 250 Q1 plus 4,060, and if we move it to the other side, this would be equal to minus 3,464.101. Okay, and we can still not solve this equation because we have one equation and two unknowns, the two shear flows, Q1 and Q2. So this is our first equation. Okay, so now we need to find another equation for Q1 and Q2. So what could be the other one relating Q1 and Q2 would be the stiffener DKH. No? So let me go to the, the next page. So let's look at the stiffener. equations. 
with two unknowns, which means that we can just go and solve for Q1 and Q2. So that's what we are doing next. So we're going to write down. We have two equations with two unknowns. So let's just say solving. What? Minus 250 Q1 plus 250 Q2 equal to minus 3,464.101 equal to, and then the second equation is 200 Q1 plus 100 Q2 equal to 2,000. So if you solve this equation, you get that Q1 will be equal to 11.2855, so let's say approximately 11.3 newtons per millimeter, that, and Q2 will be equal to minus Nine, or let's say approximately negative two point five seven newtons per millimeter. Okay, so now we need to follow a similar strategy. In order to solve for what? Oops, that's not the page I was looking for. It's this one here. Q1, Q2, we need to do the same thing for Q3 and Q4. So, what would be the best element to choose? Probably would be BF, no? The component BF over here. I look at the problem, let me reconsider this because if we take BF, we're going to relate Q3 and Q4. Just trying to save some time, and we have one equation to unknowns. If we take this one here, CJG, we have Q1, Q2 on this side that we know, and we only have this one as unknown. So, probably the best way would be to take this one first CJG, okay? So, we can solve for Q3 and then we can take BF and solve for Q4. That would be the only unknown. So let's look at the stiffener. C, J, G. Okay, so it's, it's another vertical one. Well, again, uh, maybe let me do it a little bit more to scale this time. Where that distance here is 200. And this one here is 100 millimeters. On this side, what we're going to have, you see Q1 going down, Q2 going down, and Q3 going up. Basically, you have here Q1, Q2, and then all along this side would be Q3. So I guess we forgot to put one measurement about the depth that we're going to need. Uh, no, actually we know it would be 200 plus 300. Okay, now we can do it. And I think that's it. There's no other forces, no nothing. So what we need to do is what? Do summation of forces on the y direction.
direction so let's say we put here our reference frame my direction so what do we get we're gonna get let's say the start by this one would be 300 q3 minus 200 q1 minus 100 q2 and this must be equal to zero so this will give us that 300 q3 will be equal to 200 q1 plus 100 q2 all right and we know q1 and q2 we have them right here Okay, or we could say that Q3 would just be equal to 200 Q1 plus 100 Q2 divided by 300 and we know that Q1 equal to 11.2285 and Q2 so if you substitute these values we get that Q3 will be equal to 6.67 newtons per millimeter millimeter all right and now we need to find Q4 so uh, for Q4 we say we're gonna go to the stiffener BF over here okay but we have this force so we know Q3 the only one would be Q4 but let's not forget the force F2 so we go to stiffener then and then looking at the figure what you're gonna have on the left side of this one you're gonna have Q3 going down Q4 going up okay and we have the force over here of Five hundred or five thousand. Uh, let's put five thousand. Because I think that's what I use in order to do the calculation. So let me change then the figure. So this would be here. Five thousand newtons. Okay. Sorry for that. Uh, little mistake uh, one, two, three, four. All right. so again here we need to apply the summation of forces on the y direction so what are you going to have? you're going to have 300 Q4 minus 300 Q3 minus 5,000 equal to 0 so this will mean that 300 Q4 is equal to 5,000 plus 300 Q3 okay and Q3 we 
we have it right here. So this would mean that Q4 is equal to 5,000 plus 300 Q3 divided by 300, which will give us that Q4 is equal to 23. Okay, so what is Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4? So if you remember, this is flanges, stiffeners, and then you have skin or web connecting A, B, F, E. So if you have a panel covering all this, okay, on that panel, the shear flow will be Q4, and this one will be Q3, this one will be Q1, and this one will be Q2. Okay, so let's do a little quick summary, maybe of this, so we have that, uh, so shear flows, on webs, So this one is 23.33 Newton per millimeter, Q3 6.67 Newton per millimeter, Q1 is 11.2855 Newton per millimeter, and Q2 is minus 2.5708. But again, this is the load on the webs, okay? So we found the loads on the webs. So now we should find the loads on, let's say, the flange A, B, C, D, this long one, and E, F, G, H, and then the stiffeners B, F, C, J, G, J, K, and D, K, H. All right? So let's go ahead. Let me set this page. So page five. Now we're gonna look at the flange A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. So if I plot the flange over here, so let's say we have the point here A. Know the distance between each one of them is 250, 250 millimeters and 250 millimeters. And again, if you look at the first figure, what is the load between A and B is positive. Q4 over here, and then between B and C is Three and between C and D is Q1. Okay. But now we need to be careful because this is connected to the wall. Okay. And this flange is assumed just to carry load on the actual direction. All right. So that means that. Okay. Let me do the figure and then we're gonna discuss this a little bit. And then you're gonna have a full 
goes here. F8. Okay, let's go back to this. So generally, what would you say? You would say that if you have something cantilever, let's say you only had this one here, this member A, B, C, D, what should be the reactions at the wall? Should be one on the X, one on the Y, and then a resisting moment, okay? But here, what we're assuming, and this is done all the time, is that these stiffener members, or just like you were doing in, in, uh, in the studying trusses, this can only carry load on the actual direction, so meaning in the X direction. This one can only carry loads on the Y direction. And what we, what would be carrying all the moment would be the whole structure. So it's not only this element here or this one here would be the whole structure. And what would be carrying those moments? Probably would be the deformation of this bar and this bar get transferred into the stiffeners and everything get transferred into shear flows within the panels. Okay? So what we need to remember here is the assumption that all members A, B, C, D, and this one, this one, only carry loads on the actual direction. Okay? So that's why I only put here S sub A. So now again, over here is always the same thing. You can see this time forces will be on the X direction, so you assume summation of forces on the X direction. What are you going to have? Minus FA plus 250 Q sub 4 plus 250 Q sub 3 plus 250 Q sub 1 will be equal to 0 which will give you that um, F A will be equal to 250 Q1 plus Q3 Q4. So if you do the numerical application, this will give you that F sub A is equal to 10,323 newtons. Okay, so now, for example, let's say we wanted to find le, the load at point B. So we know FA, then from here you can find what? VB would be equal to what? FA minus 250 Q4, no? Uh, sorry. So this load over here will be the FA, it's going on the left, minus whatever this is carrying. Okay, and at the end, what should be the value at the end? Be zero, no? So if you do this, this will give you that this is equal to 4,488 Newton. The load at point C will be equal to what? FB minus 250 Q3, and this will be 2,820. Five Newton, and then here you need to be careful because uh, depending on the num number of uh, after the comma you took for Q1, Q3, and Q4, you might get the zero value or very close to zero. But the important thing is the understanding over here. So VD should be equal to A B C D. So this is C, and VD should be equal to what should be equal to VB minus 250Q1. So depending on the values, number of digits you get, here you should get something very close to zero. All right? So if somebody was asking you to plot, better to plot, let's say, to sketch the load at point A, and D, you know this load will be tension compression, okay, either tension compression, so let's say we assume positive values, you know will be tension, so let's say this side of the figure will be tension, the lower side will be compression, okay, so what do we
we get here you see that upon a you will have here the value of s sub a which is the 10,000 so you so here you have f a then let's say you go here to more or less than half this value here will be f b then let's say this will be another half so here point c this will be f sub c and then this should be zero over here So if you plot this one, this member A, B, C, D is all in tension, okay? All right, so now we go to page six. So now we're gonna look at the flange At the lower flange, trying to find the page again, which is E F G H. Okay, so following exactly the same procedure, we're gonna look at flange E F G H. same as before you look at the Q so we'd be now going to the left Q4 Q3 but this time would be Q2 so we'll have it here Q4 Q3 Two, and we know that the distance between each one of them is 250 millimeters and we're gonna put over here again assume that F sub E is in tension okay so we make it going out so again we see this time the loads are again on the X direction so we say summation of forces on the x equal to zero which is going to give us that minus f sub e minus 250 q sub 4 minus 250 q sub 3 minus 250 q sub 2 equal to zero which is going to give us that f sub e is equal to minus 250 2 plus Q3 plus Q4 which we know the value for Q2, Q3, Q4 will give you F sub E equal to minus 6,859 Newton. Okay. Okay, so this is great, but sometimes it's good if you can check your work uh, by getting the same thing in a little bit slightly different way. Okay? So, let's say here alternatively alternatively FE could be found so this is more like statics so let's say you have this figure over here So we know that this is 
this tab A. So let's say this is let's assume we know that one, which is what ten three two three. Then let's say this one will be our unknown. F sub E. We know here we have five thousand. Here we'll have 4,000 being applied at an angle of 60. Okay? So over here, what we could do as well is we could do the same thing. Summation of forces on the X should give us the same result, no? So this will give us what? Minus 10,323 minus E plus four thousand sine sixty equal to zero. So if you do the substitution here you will find out that F sub E will be equal to minus six thousand eight hundred and fifty-nine newtons as well. So this will check the result over here. So it's always good to go and double check your results. All right, so this is good. This is just a check, okay? So we can say here that we did the check. All right, so if I needed to plot this one, the load over here, let me go. Okay. All right, so to have the uh, load distribu distribution on the flange, EFG, let me just uh, plot it. So basically, what can I do? Let me do it right here. All right, so let's say that would be the point EFGH. Okay, so we know that here was equal so if it's positive we know its tension is going to the left but since it's negative means that it goes in this direction so f sub e over here was equal to 6859 and we know that q4 goes in this direction q3 also goes in this direction and over here, this could be Q sub 2. Okay? So basically, what we get is that at the F of F should be equal to what? F sub E minus. 250 Q sub 4, which if you substitute by Q4, you get minus 1024.25 newtons. And similarly, if you do F sub G, would be equal to F sub F minus 250 Q sub 3 which will give you 643.5 newtons. And then again, depending on how many decimals you take, F sub H should be equal to F sub G minus 250 Q sub 2. And if you take enough decimals, what should be the value of this? Should be zero. And remember that this side would be Tension, the positive values, negative value would be compression. So in this case, you see that uh, initially F sub E is compression, so let's say it would be negative, so let would be over here. Then F sub F is still compression, let's say 
over here, but then now over here it starts being positive. So I don't know if that would be a strain line or not, but that's something like this. And then we know that over here we need to have zero. So all this section here is compression and this segment over here will be in tension. So this is tension. And all this area here will be in compression. Okay, so now we can follow exactly the same procedure, but this time now we're going to go to the stiffener day kh. So for this one, we're going to get so it's one of those vertical. Deepeners, we have this, so we know here we have here the 4000 at an angle of 60, B, K, and H. Then we know that over here we have Q1, and over here we have Q2, okay? So here, because there's a load, we need to apply what you did in statics or solid mechanics and solid mechanics. Let's say you're going to start from the, we know at D the force is zero, or we could start from H, but let's say we start from D because we know F sub D is equal to zero. And let's say that now we start from point D and we just make a cut over here. So this will be point D over here. So, so that will be working here for the F DK force. Okay. And let's say this will be, I will call a system. Let's call this one Z to differentiate between X and Y. All right, and we know this is Q1, and we know that Q1 was equal to 11.2855, or is equal to 11.2855. So we do the summation of forces along the cut, or you could put Y, what would you have? You have FDK minus Q1 times Z equal to zero. So this will give you that F dk is equal to q1 times z. Or this is will be equal to 11.2855z. All right. So now we can say at Z equals, so this is 200, gonna have FDK was equal to 2257.1 newtons. All right. So now, after we pass the cut, after we pass the force, remember you need to make a cut every time you're going to see the skin, it is a discontinuity on the force. So you need to make a cut right before this, so now you need to make cuts right after. So if we make the cut right after, let me just make that a bit longer, right here. We have the force over here, 4,060 degrees. This is still point D. So now we have Q1 
P1, P2, uh, we're going to try to find out FKH. All right. So over here, we know again that F sub D equal to zero. So we have, um, so this would be the positive Z. So we have minus Q1 times Z, where Z would be equal to the force at 200, minus Q2 times, so the Z will start from here, would be Z minus 200. So it would be Z starting from here, okay, minus that distance, which is 200. Hundred and this is okay, all the way down would be one hundred here all the way down. All right, so we have this plus F K H, and we don't have to forget the force here plus. So we need to take the y component, the component here would be cosine 60 equal to zero. So this will give us that f k h equal to this value basically would be this one right here, so 2000. So I'm moving this one, all these terms to the side would be 2,257.1 plus the value of Q2 is uh, from the previous pages minus 2.5709 so this is Q2 times z minus 200. Okay, so this would be positive. We move it to the other side, minus 2000. So if we simplify all this, we get fkh equal to minus 2.5709z plus 771. I know it might be a little bit too much information here, but at z equal two hundred, this gives that f k h equal to two fifty seven from one. And at z equal 300, if we did everything correct, you should get fkh very close to zero. So that means that if we need to plot the load distribution throughout the stiffener day kh, all right, so let's just do a line. Say this is D, K, and H. So we know it's zero at the top, zero at the bottom. Here would be positive value. So we go to this would be the 2257.1. They say jump here to. 257.1 of 2000 basically okay because of the load and then all this goes to zero and again when this is positive this side will be tension 
and this side is compression. Okay. All right, so let's keep going with the same uh, approach. Now let's look at the stiffener. Yeah. So stiffener BF is the one over here. So the one where we have the 5,000 newtons load. So this is here, 5,000. And we know this side we have Q3, and on this side we have Q4. Okay? So again, let's say we start from here. This is Z. All right. And we're going to do the same thing as before. So we're going to make a cut and then we're going to do the calculations. So we're gonna here, so let's see, summation of forces on the Z. Will give us, uh, what do we get over here? We we'll get, with this positive, we'll get then uh, Q3 Z positive minus Q for Z negative plus okay I forgot to do the sketch of the cut so let me do the cut over here sorry for that so we have here Q4 Q3 And here we'll have F, B, F, and again, you know here the load here is zero, okay? All right, so we can start from that end, plus F, B, F equals zero. So we get that F, B, F equal to Q4 minus Q3Z, okay? And once you substitute for the value of Q3 and Q4, so this will give us that F, the F equal to 16.66Z. Okay, just as a reminder, I put it right here, Q4 is equal to 23.33 and Q3 is 6.67, okay? So as before, at Z equal 300, which will be that distance here we have that f d f is equal to 4998 which makes sense because it should be very close to the 5000 okay if we take more decimals okay so uh, if we needed to do the distribution through that flange, basically the way we look is that this is B and this is F. We'll have zero over here up to 5,000. 
and it will be linear. So we go from 0 to 5000, and this side will be tension. The other one will be compression. Then we go to the stiffener. CG. Okay, and again, it's uh, I mean it's always the same process. So I think by now you got it. So here we're gonna have. Q1, Q2, Q3, so this will be C, G, I didn't put this one here, we know that distance here will be 200, this one will be 100. Okay, so again, the Z would be from here. We know the load is zero, we make the cut. I make the cut. We know here this F sub C is zero. This would be here Q sub three. Choose some one, and this will be at CJ. We do the summation on the Z direction. So you get um, F CJ plus Q1Z. Remember, this is positive, the Z here, minus Q3Z equal to zero. So as before we're gonna get a linear distribution. This will be equal to Q3 minus Q1 Z which will give you I put the values here will be 6.67 minus 11.2855 Z or just at CJ equal to negative 4.6155 Z. And this means at Z equal to 100, we have the uh, F C J is equal to minus Nine to three point one. Okay, that will give us the first value. So, as before, now we need to make the cut after we pass the distribution because, due to this Q2, this created discontinuity on the loading. So, our certain cut. will be further down. Let's say we have here, here we have the Q1, this will be the Q2, and all this side will be the Q3. Again, we start from here with a Z, FC is zero over here. So I'm going to do it on the side. Summation of forces on the Z would give us what?
FCJ plus 200 Q1 for this one over here. Okay, this is 200 plus Q2 of what? The Z starts over here, so you need to do Z minus 200. Okay, so the Z all that distance minus this one. Then minus Q sub 3 Z. And this should be equal mm -hmm. to zero. So now, if we solve for F C J, this would give us minus 200 times 11.2855, which is Q1. Minus Q2, which is minus 2.5709 times Z minus 200 plus Q3, which is 6.67 Z. So if you substitute all these values over here, you're going to get that F C J is equal to 9.24 Z minus 2,771.11. Okay, and here you will find out that at Z equal to 100, FCJ should be equal to the same as before, minus 2, 923.1, but that at Z equal 300, FCJ is equal to minus so it should be equal to what? We go from one end to the other, so this should be equal to, right here, this should be equal to zero, there's no force. All right? So if I plot this one here, C, J, M. Okay, we know we start from zero. And J we go to minus 923.1 and then we go to zero. And because this is a negative, this will be Compression. So this one is in compression. Okay, so this member will be in compression. And I think the last one we need to do is the stiffener. JK. So this is the one that we actually started with. What we have here Q1. We have here Q2. Okay, we know the distance is 250. And that's what we have the force of 4,000 and an angle of 60. So again, uh, let's say we start at J, so we know we make the cut. F, J, K. In this case, let's say this will be our Z. Okay, so we have Q2 in this direction, we have Q1 in this direction. 
All right. So this will give us what? It will do summation of forces on the Z. We're going to get F, J, K. Then we're going to get what? Uh, minus Q1Z plus Q2Z equal to zero, which means that F, J, K will be equal to Q1 minus Q2Z, which will give us that F, J, K equal to 11.2855 minus minus 2.5709 times Z, which will give that F, J, K will be equal to 13.8 Five six four Z. Okay, so F J K. Let's say we know uh, at two fifty, so we know here will be zero. Okay, so at two fifty. And z equal to 50, if we did it correct, should be approximately equal to what? To whatever would be the force on the x direction. So if we did it correct, we should get about 4,000 sine 60. Okay? So we do this calculation. Actually, we got that is equal to 3,464.1. I think that's when you do this calculation, but this should be the exact value if we did it correct. So maybe to save some space, I can just do the distribution over here. Go here. So J, K. So we'll be Z over here. And this value here should be the 3000. 464, and all these members should be in tension because it's positive. So I think with this, we did finish the whole analysis. So this will be the end of this video.